Welcome to the latest episode of the Create Smarter Podcast. I'm your host of today's episode, Phil DiMartino. We are joined today by Lindsay Roth, the Director of Direct Marketing and Participation at Brandeis University. Lindsay recently joined us for a webinar talking about their Tuesdays at Brandeis project, a video project and campaign we put together here with Brandeis all about mentorship. Really happy with how the, how the program went. Lindsay came to join us to talk all about the campaign, the videos, the process, the results. Um, really great tips if you're an institution looking to put together something similar and uh, really great conversation. It's always fun to talk to Lindsay and we want to share it with you here in podcast form now. So please sit back, relax, and enjoy the latest episode of the Create Smarter Podcast. Lindsay, welcome. Hello. Hi. So right. happy to be here. Thank you so much for being yeah, here. Yeah. Um, I know our team, me personally and our team, had a lot of fun on this project and to me that's often a measure of whether or not it was successful. Mm -hmm. Like, I know there's gonna be a lot of results that we share that show the actual success of this, but I know sometimes you just feel like things are going really well and you're mm -hmm. getting really good stuff. Yep, definitely. Um, Brandeis, you know, is a university that um, faces a lot of the same challenges that we all do in the industry. How do we, you know, engage volunteers? How do we find ways to tell new stories that center on student impact and the student experience? And also, how do we create video that can be repurposed time and time again so that it is you know, really budget and cost efficient, but also is continuing to feed the content monster that we are all at the mercy of in today's day and age. So this was definitely a fun project for us too at Brandeis. Um, and you know, I think also, as we'll talk about, we saw some really great results and responses from the community that weren't necessarily tied to just donors and dollars. So can we start out just by you sharing kind of the, the background here? What was the thought process? What were you trying to accomplish? Um, so there's a couple of parts to this. Obviously, there's a famous alumni who you had um, who was willing to kind of lend his voice to this at the very start of this project that, that helped spur the idea. But then also, we're talking about a calendar year end, excuse me, a Fiscal cool. year-end mm -hmm. campaign as well as um, an honor a mentor campaign. Yep. So what kind of led you to, to say, this is all, let's bring all these elements together and yeah. try to create a campaign around Definitely. it? Definitely. So one of the, the pieces was that, you know, we had Mitch Album who was willing to put a call out to just ask for stories about um, mentorship in the theme that, you know, he takes in his book with Tuesdays with Maury. Maury was his sociology professor. They forged obviously a lifelong connection and it was the inspiration behind his best-selling best memoir that many people are still reading and connecting with today. Um, but it's interestingly not something that is always synonymous with Brandeis within our own community. I think it is maybe more so out in the universe, you know, um, and in the, the literary world, but we wanted to really connect him with Brandeis and that story with Brandeis um, while also utilizing that as a pipeline for new stories about impact around the student experience. And it's very easy to say, hey, you know, alumni, who made a difference when you were a student? But because we had this almost um, theme to run with, we wanted to really plant the seed of who was your Maury and tell us more about it. Um, and we created a submission form. We got, you know, hundreds of submissions from people all over the globe and really thought, okay, well, this is something that we might have here. And how do we turn this into a fundraising campaign while also continuing to highlight the stories that were submitted and inspire more. Were you surprised at the level of response you got when you first did a call for submissions? I mean, we didn't really know what to expect because we hadn't done something like this before. Video was also and still remains kind of a new field for us at Brandeis. You all have been wonderful partners in that <laughs> regard and that's what I Thank appreciate you. about working with vendors like you is that you become kind of an extension of our team um, and, and you know brainstorm with us and things like that. But I also think that you know when you don't ask, you really don't know. And so it was all about just being okay with the fact that we could put the call out there and we might not get anything. But people connected to it. And I think part of that was, yes, it had um, a famous alum attached to it, but also it was a story that really resonates with people. And as we saw throughout the project, a lot of the people that we focused on 
happen to also come to Brandeis or be more aware of Brandeis because of Tuesdays with Maury and the fact that they read it during their, you know, uh, elementary or uh, middle school or high school career. And so that's what sort of got the wheels turning about their journey to Brandeis as well, which is something that was so unanticipated and, and a nice surprise. The other really interesting common thread that I feel like we saw and I think you saw in the submissions was that a lot of the people who alums and students raised their hand and said, this is my mentor, mm -hmm. they showed up a lot. So there's a professor yeah. who, wow, this person influenced a lot of yep. different people and that can also help you in your efforts to say like, okay, well maybe we should be yep. engaging with people who studied in this department exactly. um, because they probably had a really yep. positive experience and a positive mentor yep. mentorship experience yes. as well. Absolutely, and I think also what was nice to see in addition to that was the people who have not been responding to us, the people who are highly rated and have a prospect manager and responded with a really thoughtful, um, you know, heartfelt tribute in honor of somebody who made their, their time at Brandeis meaningful. And that is just such an easy, open-ended question to empower the prospect manager at a key time of year, the end of fiscal year, when all of our goals are looming and you know time is running short, to be able to reach out and just say, tell me about your time here. We have this amazing campaign and I want to make sure that your story ends up on the wall so that we can count it as just another example of the impact of a Brandeis education. And not really talk about the money, not talk about the fact that you need to make a gift by June 30th, but instead just tell me what made you feel good as a student and who was responsible for that. Lindsay, we talked a little bit about you know video being something that you know you haven't dabbled with as much at Brandeis, but specifically I think we took a pretty specific approach to how we wanted to do video in this case in order to capture these stories um, and really bringing these people together who have these really unique personal relationships. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So what was the thought process there for you in terms of how you wanted to try to capture these conversations? Well, I think for me it was more about making sure that we came across, as you said earlier, authentic. We wanted to be genuine. I gave you some examples that were where students had written letters mm -hmm. and then basically invited the mentor to come and they weren't given too much information about the the premise of why they were coming to participate in this project and then they walk through the door they see the student or alum and then they'll, they physically like read their letter to them and the tears start flowing and i was just like i want that and, and we did get we, that we did we did get <laughs> that in more than one it was event, real which it is was the best very part very genuine yeah. um but i think that giving you that example to run with was great because then we came up with the concept that you now showed which was us being essentially a fly on the wall to the the person the mentee telling the story and then experiencing a genuine reaction from the mentor and um and and i i couldn't be more pleased i mean you know these were also a new concept because what we're seeing in addition to ultra short video um, out in the world is is long form mm -hmm. content stuff that isn't you know uh, bite sized and and just quick and shareable stuff that actually allows the person to dive in deeper and you know the the clip that you showed around the book and the inspiration that was connected to the subjects that we featured you know that was a bonus clip that we were able to put up on our channels for people to dive deeper if they wanted to get to know people um, a bit more and learn more about the subjects that we we're highlighting. So in general, I think that the concept came off beautifully um, and, and at the end of the day made sure that we stuck to our intention, which was to be authentic, tell good stories, and let the inspiration to give kind of happen a bit more organically. And you talk about um, authenticity, and one of the things we had prepped for this shoot was a bunch of prompts because you never know you get in a room and it's like yes these people say they know each other mm -hmm. maybe they haven't seen each other in a couple of years it could be super awkward mm -hmm. we want to make sure they have something to talk about yep. i don't think we needed to prompt anybody no. like with anything it no. was like we started rolling the cameras before they came in and saw each other and kind of reunited mm -hmm. so that we could capture that first interaction and our instructions to them were basically sit down and talk to each yes. other and we let it roll for yep. however long it went yep. it was about you know, 45 yeah. minutes, yeah. Um, and we didn't need to no, jump in. Like, it was as yeah. real as it gets. Yep, 
And I think that's part of the reason why we ended up going with longer form videos because the content was just so meaningful and it was like, it would do a disservice to the story itself to cut some of that out. Um, and I also like remember sitting in um, it behind the scenes, behind the camera, and then at the, you know, nearing the end of the conversation, Marissa going through the checklist of prompts and being like, you just answered all of our questions, we're done here, you know? And so again, I think that that speaks to um, the, like sometimes just trusting the people on screen to speak to their story best and not coming in feeling like you have to script out every single part of the video because then you're missing out on those genuine moments, those tears, or also, you know, little squeals of glee at seeing each other for the first time in a while um, that ultimately can really, really make the viewer um, on the other end of the screen when the product is finished just feel that palpable emotion. And when you talk about the the authenticity is for the viewer, it's also for the person who's in the video and making sure mm -hmm. this is something that they're proud of and that they want to share. Yeah. What impact do you think that has and how do you think you might carry that forward, I guess, in terms of like creating things that your subjects share so you can have it in front of their networks as yeah. well? Like, is yeah. that part of your thought process here? Is that something you'll think about in future yes, projects Yes, I think definitely for the future. Um, you know, we do a project um, to honor young alumni who are really um, successful in their various fields. But I also think that, you know, um, looking at people who are also living out the mission of the university or the organization in their everyday life and celebrating that. Um, for us, you know, we didn't really consider how many followers or, you know, how, how far, how high did they rise in the ranks in this story? We really just focused on what made us like, oh, Mm -hmm. feel good when we were reading the submission. And then it also led to, okay, we have some scheduling conflicts. It might not work for this time. Maybe it'll work for the next time. We had some people who were very popular submissions. And so that gave us a rabbit hole to fall down as well. And so I think it's a little bit of a mix, but with more timeline and runway, you can certainly hone in on people that have bigger followings on social media that you can leverage to continue to sort of natively get in the feed of your everyday alum. The videos obviously were a central part of this and helped drive this campaign, but this wasn't just a video driven campaign. This wasn't just toss some videos on social and hope for the best. Mm -hmm. What was involved in this campaign from an overarching standpoint yeah. and how did you get this in front yeah, of people? Yeah, so this was very much an integrated campaign. Um, we started at the end of May, just after commencement, a time where we are celebrating the culmination of work, obviously, of our students and also launching them out into the quote unquote real world that our alumni are already in. And at a time when, you know, I think naturally we're all seeing like the grads and dads kind of campaigns. And so, you know, people, they, they naturally think about their time and, and where they were at that point in their um, academic career. And so we launched with a, a, um, a teaser, as you showed, which was great for getting excitement built up and starting to get those impressions. Um, but we also dropped a mailer in homes that let people know that they would start to see every Tuesday in June, a new episode of an uh, example of a, of a mentor-mentee relationship, and it was all billed under the Tuesdays with Maury concept. Um, and so, you know, we called it Tuesdays at Brandeis. Tagline was, who's your Maury? Um, and, and from there, we were able to also retarget on social media using the videos. What's nice, we use Kirkwood Direct, which is a local vendor in Waltham for direct mail. They also have an option where you can actually pinpoint um, people on social media and get direct matches to the user on um, Facebook, Instagram, and through Google Display with cookies. And so we were able to retarget a lot of the video content as served ads. And our click-through rate was amazing. It was 22%. It led it right to the homepage, got more impressions and, and things there. And we struck a really nice cadence where 
We were able to send out the teaser videos on a Tuesday, link it to the full long form on the website, and then refresh with those who hadn't engaged yet on Thursday or Friday later that week before the cycle started again the following Tuesday. And that worked really, really nicely. And then we also had Phonathon calling throughout with this message of, you may have seen this campaign, and if you haven't, can I just tell you what it's about? And they would ask the question, who's your, like, who's your Maury? Who made your time at Brandeis special? We just wanna to talk to you about that. And that also was what we were able to empower our prospect managers at a key time of year, just before June 30th, when those deadlines are looming, the goals are off in the distance, and you just want any excuse really to get somebody to respond to you. And so it gave them really good, um, solid scripting to go out and kind of cold call, cold email, or just drop a note um, and see what, what responses they got from their prospects. Ultimately, the priority buckets that you're concerned about, I mean, they came through in this. Oh, yeah. You mentioned, I think one of the things that we wanted to talk about was the fact that this was able to focus on some of the newer resources at Brandeis. Absolutely. And that came yep. through in the in the submissions, right? Yep. We didn't have to go searching no. for them, they came to us, right? Yeah. And so something that we wanted to sort of showcase was the more traditional, aspect um, and you saw that um, with Eve and and Lily and like how that was like a professor and a student uh, working together in the lab um, bonding over puzzles things like that and then it you know sort of ran the the whole spectrum you saw the coach and the and the player and the advisor and the student um, in in need of of guidance and then that also went to what mentorship now looks like in present day and into the future at Brandeis in the form of pride reps through the gender and sexuality center which is a very new resource on Brandeis um, at campus for students and we were able to feature and highlight them um, for alumni and uh, the entire community but especially our queer alumni network they were thrilled to see that something like that had come to fruition on campus um, that they previously did not have access to but would have loved to. And we saw the response in them making a gift and, and expressing that through the giving process. And you're able to highlight those resources through stories, but then here's a screenshot from mm -hmm. the site. Um, you're also highlighting the resources that are available to students yeah. and alums at Brandeis generally. Exactly. So this campaign also served as, a, as an engagement campaign yes. and not just a fundraising yes. campaign. What were some of the things you, hi you focused on um, yeah. from that standpoint in order so to try to get people involved? For us, it was all about making sure that we were highlighting what's out there currently and just using it as another excuse to educate. And so you have Hyatt Career Center that's there, um, and that is obviously our on-campus resource, but alumni have access to those resources for life. The other one is BeConnect, which is kind of like our our uh, alumni digital network. It allows you to sign up to different niche groups to be um, affiliated with. You can host um, you know, online discussions and panels. There are special events that happen specifically on that um, network, and that was something that was launched just prior to this campaign. So it was another way for us to elevate the knowledge around that platform as well. And then really it was about, you know, connecting on social media, making sure that we're finding ways to drive people to, you know, LinkedIn and Instagram, Facebook, all of the 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 standard players, and then really signing up to be mentors and 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 expressing interest in helping students if you're currently an alum at any stage of your career. I think that's an important point too, and and we see it here is the idea of become a Mori as well, right? Yep. Like mentorship only works if there are mentors. Mm -hmm. And running a campaign like this probably starts to feel a little disingenuous if you don't tell people, hey, yeah. here's how you can try to exactly. step up and yep. and share your knowledge with, yeah. with someone who's there currently exactly, as well. Exactly, exactly. And um, we definitely got a great response rate um, from this. And also it, again, just allows us as, you know, the development office on campus to partner with other units in a way that promotes their mission and the reason why they're there as well. Sometimes, you know, um, there can be friction and tension points when you're dealing with such a large community. Um, and it can feel very siloed because you're there to do different things even though you're working towards a common mission. And this was a way for us to leverage this campaign to just open doors even further and really partner with 
the um, areas of campus like the Career Center, like the alumni relations team, and, and, and then some, so that we made sure that we were featuring um, the options within their uh, units as well. Let's talk results from a fundraising standpoint. Yeah. Um, I know you had a challenge gift, yes. you had a challenge goal. Talk yep. to me about, you know, did you reach your goals and, and how did this campaign yeah. end up performing from a, a fundraising standpoint? Yeah, so we had a $50,000 challenge from Spencer Sherman, he was class of 83, and his prospect manager reached out to me early on when I was talking about this concept with our colleagues and she said he's really into Tuesdays with Maury. And I feel like this would be such a great match for him because of the theme of it. Um, and he was instantly on board, which was wonderful. We actually hit our goal very early on in the month. And so we um, trickled in the offline support um, accordingly so that we could continue to leverage the um, hook um, further on um, out into the month. But we did reach our goal. We ended up cr um, raising $125,000 from roughly 400 uh, donors, which was wonderful and definitely outpaced um, our previous fiscal year and campaign. Um, and, and the click-through rates, the open rates, uh, the genuine and heartfelt, you know, um, responses that we got were just the, it was beyond anything that we could have imagined. And then the next point is celebrating it, right? Yeah. You talk about your challenge donor, you talk mm -hmm. about celebrating those results and you make sure everybody know, hey, yes. we came together, we did something great and we raised extra money that's gonna go towards programs like this. Exactly, exactly. And I think the other pieces is then looking at the different units that we partnered with and how they're utilizing this. Specifically, you know, the teams, um, how Mary can use that footage for recruitment mm -hmm. for stewardship of her own donors for um, you know just welcoming her students um, onto the team and using it as part of the orientation process and then the gender and sexuality center who is still very new and trying to spread the word about who they are we gave them such a good package to be able to roll out to campus and to to utilize in the greater networking community that Julian is using as a director, you know, on a college campus. Um, the other piece is that you know they still are our staunchest advocates and participants. And for Giving Dice Day, um, the largest amount of advocates that we had on our Giving Day platform were from the Gender and Sexuality Center. They are utilizing that campaign as a jumping off point to really mobilizing their students as a force within alumni giving. And so it's nice to see that these partnerships aren't just through this campaign, but we're really a jumping off point that we're continuing to come back to throughout the year. That's amazing. That's mm -hmm. so great. And I mean, like mm -hmm. hopefully it's as students and then continues mm -hmm. when they're alums and they can they exactly. can spread the word about this and mm -hmm. engage with current students exactly. and build some relationships there too. Yep. So the big question that um, I know people are gonna ask, how can this be replicated at other institutions? You talked a lot about the process that went into this and the work that went into this. What are some of the tips you have for how this can be done at other institutions? Yeah. So I think first and foremost, when you think about your institution, there might be a specific figure or mascot or theme that pops out that's unique to your constituents. And you should lean into that because that's what's gonna catch their attention. That's what's going to not to be too markety, but take something from bland to grand. Um, <laughs> hey, it's on the site for this. So. I know, right? <laughs> um, but I think that the the biggest the biggest thing that you can really do is try to have fun, which is definitely what we did in this. And it's not that all of the conversations that we had weren't heartfelt and kind of deep and 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 emotional. But I think we approached this from the outset about being authentic and, and true to Brandeis. And we were able to really accomplish that because of that you know, agreement at the outset um, and let go of any kind of um, preconceived notions of what you need this to be. And instead, just be open to the feedback and see what your audience is telling you. And then, like I said, lean into those stories that wanna be told. Because at the end of the day, you have to start somewhere and the more that you lean into those stories that are going to work with you, those subjects that want to help you, the better off you will be with the final product because they're invested. It's a partnership. 
they want to make sure that their story is told and that the university um, looks good because they're obviously, if they're working with you on something like this, they, they're, they're in it. They're, they're invested in the university coming off and, and looking really great. What about lessons learned? If you were to go back and try to do something like this again, what might you do differently or what advice might uh, you have to somebody about what to avoid? When we scheduled one of our conversations in a COVID testing site area and I thought <laughs> foolishly that that was going to mean that it would be quiet <laughs> and it was actually in an atrium where noises traveled upward and it was like as soon as we started recording somebody with a cart of glass bottles started pushing through <laughs> this like rickety I just remember having to stop people in the lobby and being like, give me 10 minutes. And, and <laughs> I will begging, help you clean this up if begging, you give me 10 minutes. Please. Like, it was like I, I went down and asked them, please don't pack up the site until I come down and ask. And then they started packing up. I had to go remind them, please stop pushing chairs along the floor. And so I think like scouting the location, but then maybe spending a little more time in the location so that you can get a feel, especially if it's a more publicly accessible through space, mm -hmm. what those noises feel like um, was, was a big thing. Um, and then the other piece is just think about what kind of seeds you want to plant beyond this campaign. How can you reuse this content? I mean, for us, we're planning to do this campaign again this year. I think that this just scratches the surface on more stories that we have to tell. Um, and so being able to utilize this as an example of what a story could, could look like and become um, in the lead up, but then also making sure that our partners and admissions have these videos as something to go off of as an example of the impact of a brand type mm -hmm. education. Our partners at the Hyatt Career Center have access to these um, stories so that again they can utilize it as they see fit in their work um, just being able to you know open doors and and really create more open paths of communication internally and externally is great how can people get in touch with you if they want to pick your brain on a deeper level and learn more and try to figure out how to do this at yeah their um, my my email address is lroth at brandice.edu you can also find me on LinkedIn um, I'm always happy to brainstorm Thank you.